social media. Yeah. I heard that he died of an ear infection. Yeah, an ear infection, and apparently yeah. they arrested the nurse who injected him with with a tetanus a tetanus injection. Mm. Yeah, actually saying yeah the curse could be naira mali at a point. Yeah, probably yeah, most of the people are because at that at that time most record labels don't have like an exact address where you can find them and be like hey. Alright, it's your boy Kev Kelly once again on the house of the Kings and Queens talk show. Once again, I have my guest in the house. Man, hey. I'm always glad having you on the show. <laughs> Me too, Kelly. Uh-huh. It's always a pleasure being here. All right, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Alan Webbs. And my links are... As always, I've been telling them to you. This time around, let me keep them for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll tell them to you at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's Alan Ray. This is the yeah. man with the gist, the man with the talk. <laughs> you know what it is. So uh, right about now, I want to take you deep down into the topic of more bad. Yeah, yeah it's you trending. Heard, you heard RP, RP to the big man, more yeah, bad. RIP. Yeah, I was one of, one of the greatest artists of all time. Yeah, people yeah. really liked him. On silence mode, boy. Beast name but it cause volume, but still priest me. You don't have to hurt me before you win. I wasn't listening more to his music, but mm -hmm. then depending on the little I had about him, he was really great. But I was surprised and shocked. This is the first time I'm seeing an artist surfacing. The last time I saw it was with a which artist came during lockdown somewhere in Munyonyo. Uh -huh. Omale. Yeah. Omale came out of nowhere. He had a show in Uganda and from Uganda to the world. So, Mobad is the second artist I've seen with such massive masses coming coming out in support and in seek for justice of his death. Yeah, sure. I hadn't seen such numbers. And I didn't know the artist of recent. Uh -huh. Not until I saw news trending online and I was like, damn. Can I briefly take you through his bio, bio data? Yeah. Yeah, so Mobad, his birth name is... The Nigerian names are hard to read. <laughs> <laughs> his his original name is Ilerulua mm -hmm. Oladimeji Alova. Yeah? Yeah. Also known as Imole. Yeah? He mm. was born 8th June 1996, Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. He died on 12th September 2023. Mm. Age 27, yeah, in Nigeria too. His kind of music was Afrobeat. Yeah, I'm a Afrobeat. piano, Afropop, and hip hop. Yeah. yeah. Watch your patience. He was he was a singer. He was a singer. A songwriter, a musician, yeah. yeah. The instruments, vocals, yes, he was active from 2020, 2019 to 2023, yeah. The levels he was signing, Marlene's music, yeah, and immolinization. Yeah, that that was his own. His channels, more bad. His YouTube channel. The subscribers, yeah. he had 139k subscribers. That's the total views, 22.5 million. Yeah, people used to view his channel. Yeah. That's quite so a big number. Apparently, he died at the age 27. This boy was still young. He had a lot to accomplish, a lot more. A lot, a lot to accomplish. So, on the internet, mm -hmm. on uh, social media, yeah. I heard that he died of an ear infection. Yeah, an ear infection, and apparently yeah. they arrested the nurse who injected him with with a tetanus a tetanus injection. Mm. Yeah, why? Do you, I'm hearing different, 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 different allegations. Yeah, which is which? Was some saying food poisoning? Yeah, some are saying an ear infection. Yeah, and they're choosing it on the nurse. Some are actually saying yeah. The curse could be Naira Mali at a point. Uh, probably, yeah. Most of the people are choosing Naira Because at that time, More Bad was planning to leave Naira, Ma yeah, Naira Mali's record label. Yeah, true. Yeah? He was wanting to, I think, live independently. No, I think he had already quit. He had already quit? He had quit. So now, there were rumors that there was still feud between him and Naira Mali and, and the Malian Records members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Naira Mali says, he had nothing like anything to do with him. Mm. But Naira Mali's colleagues were always hunting him down. At times, it could be on video shoots. They would come along. At one time, he came up on 
live on a live stream and he was crying out loud for the public on a live mm. they had hit Who, him more bad? badly yeah more bad mm-hmm. but people took this as as you know artists they know artists use a lot of drugs at times and when they are really high they do a lot of stuff yeah. so people didn't take it serious he came out crying several times he was being hit one time they found him at a video shoot he was hit but he couldn't go to the police because of one of the colleagues of Mobad he was so connected no naira mali's colleague mm-hmm. i think the second in command he was yeah. so connected that even if Mobad went to the police to report nothing could be done all that information came out right after the death so it's all linking to naira mali probably just like the two pack issue when you try to come out to leave Naira Mali could be okay with you. All right. But the members because Naira Mali the members in the in the record label definitely because I believe Naira Mali can't run the record label alone. Yeah. Because he's also an artist. He might be the face but he has people behind him. So to me I think it's a lot more big issue. Wait, can one person run the record label alone? Probably. Was Don Jazzy <clears throat> running Marvin Records alone? When you look at Don Jazzy, Don Jazzy had had to step aside. and do it with music for some time. Oh yeah. You get yeah, it. Yes, right. Yeah. With Naira Mali, Naira Mali was active with music. When you look at Olamide, Olamide had to step aside for some few years. For him to run his record him label. To run the record label. Yeah. Because the record label is a company. It's a legit company that is supposed to have an address that's supposed to have um people working day in day out. When you talk about the address, yeah? yeah. There's days we find that it's hard. to look for a record label yeah mm-hmm. if it's looking for a record label it will have to be this director for Brilliant. me for him to get me connected yeah. to a record label True. most record labels don't have like an exact address where you can find them and be like hey this this is this is like a this is like a black market records mm-hmm. yeah i can cuz everyone knows what black market yeah. records is, is the case so yeah. i can reach out there and sign in for a record label mm-hmm. but you find that most of the record labels are it's hidden you can't tell where exactly they are you have to look like for a specific person to get you mm. connected there probably i think that comes to the point that this this begins with how you start when you look at most record labels we have a lot of record labels here in uganda mm-hmm. but if you start mentioning of addresses you might only get two two addresses. addresses yeah one like you spoke black market yeah in bogolovi mhm swangs avenue Those two area. are very known. So can you give me an address of TNS? Do you know any address? <laughs> no. I don't. But many other but they are making a lot of money out there. Yeah. But you unless you are so connected. Don't you think that the dad brings uh don't you think uh, many artists many artists are out there and they're talented but just because they don't know where these record labels are located the 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 the, the, the talent just dies out because we know that record mm. labels help us promote our music true yeah one thing you should know is uh, the industry the music industry in africa is more of a cult it's a cult where by you have to you have to sacrifice mm-hmm. to get to where you want to be so it's upon you just like someone is getting money from someone actually it's more than a, it's more like a cult because exactly. they're hidden so you, you you can't tell me you know with african tradition when someone goes to a cult mm-hmm. and they become rich yeah to take you to that cult you have to sacrifice if you are ready mm. so it's the same thing with the music business in africa when someone has a record label it's always so hard to connect a friend mm. that's why you see different stories coming up around the music industry why 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 is it hard is it is it because the non legitimately placed in a certain area Prob- as me I might know many record labels in the country. As you. As me. Yeah. And I know their addresses. Uh-huh. But an upcoming artist right down there in Natete wants to submit his music even online. He doesn't know what email he to can use. to use to yeah. send to his audio to a record label. Uh. What does it portray? All these people put up their businesses. up on one person a man artist as alan yeah. i'm giving an example i'm not an artist mm-hmm. but if a man artist a record label will run along one person as alan yeah so anywhere he is he's representing a record label mm-hmm. they don't need offices offices are in their phones 
That's where record labels are sitting as addresses. What would it take for one person to to get signed into a record label? This is because one thing running a record back label. in the days, mm. record labels yeah. were uh, before you assign into a record label, you would meet you would meet like uh, the secretary, this, yeah. yeah, or the personal assistant to the to the director of the yeah. record label, True. and that person listen to what you had to say, mm-hmm. take you through an interview, take yeah? you to studio, then take you to studio, yeah. try to listen to your mm-hmm. to your tracks, yeah. So then afterwards. Then she or he, the secretary or the passion assistant, yeah. takes that takes those songs to mm-hmm. the other board directors yeah. to listen to your songs. If they appreciate mm. your songs, then they give you a copy yeah. of the contract. Mm. Yeah, what's happened to those days when uh people used to pass through that procedure, mm. yeah, of getting into a record label? Because these days what you what you see these days is uh mm. they'll just pick out an artist, yeah. The person will come in and wants to get signed into a record label. Yeah. They'll just sign them instantly. One thing, Kelly, you should know is those days it was talent before. They I would know, sign I've, you I've because actually noticed you were one talented. Thing. I've noticed one thing about the artists, yeah? Mm. You realize these things of uh, maybe the wrongs between uh, the record label and the artist, yeah? One thing I've noticed with the artists from the, 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 the companies they've been working with, mm-hmm. yeah, you find that an artist, mm. when they give them a contract, a contract comes with a number of things you yeah. are supposed to follow as an yeah. artist. But you find that most artists don't take the time to read through all those procedures. Kelly, have you ever gotten a chance to look at any company contract? Bro, I've looked at a lot. Do you go through it or you have the money to pay a lawyer to go through it for you? <laughs> yeah? Look, I would take my time to read through those rules. I'm one type of guy who is mm. critical when you give me something. Most especially with business. So, I have to read. Well, I may have a lawyer uh-huh. to read through all yeah. those those procedures. Uh-huh. But then I want to read through all those pr- procedures not to make a mistake in the future time. So Kelly, let me give you my my experience with, with the issue of the contract. Mm-hmm. Here I get a contract from a company. I'm given the contract on Friday and they want it on Monday. Tell me any law firm that works on weekends here in Uganda. You get me. A company gives you a contract on Friday. They want it on Monday mm-hmm. for approval. Yeah. So they give it to you because they know all you have to do is sign. One thing I've noticed about the artists at times, mm-hmm. they're also scared at the same point. Not yeah? being scared. Some don't have the freedom of speech. Uh-huh. Yeah. If I'm if I've gone and signed into a record label mm-hmm. and they've given me a contract to read through and the one made to present it on Friday, mm-hmm. and the one made to present it on Monday. You need to feel free because you're not chained into, into a cage that you don't know how to speak. <clears throat> you need to feel free to tell them that I have my lawyer mm-hmm. and the, the law firm don't work on weekends. Uh-huh. Yeah, You can give me some time either by, by, by Tuesday yeah. or Wednesday to present the contract to you. Yeah? Instead of uh, you keeping quiet and mm-hmm. yet you know you have somebody who's going to read those procedures. Kelly, here it is. Look at it at this point of view. You came looking for the job. They didn't call you. Uh-huh. They didn't spot you because you are talented. You came looking for an opportunity. They listened to your music. They gave you the chance. Here they present a contract on your table with a contract saying, we are giving you 50 million Uganda shillings up front. Mm-hmm. We are giving you a car. We are, we are giving you a house because most artists, their eyes drive straight to what they are, they are getting. From to the, the cash. They well, won't they look at the, the terms. They don't read the other side of definitely. the terms that says you have to uh-huh. produce five albums every month. Exactly. <laughs> when you talk of producing, when he comes here, for instance, at Bantu Studios, uh-huh. he'll look at the live studio, he'll go to the production studio, mm-hmm. he'll go to the video room. Definitely, he'll think five albums are just something to play with. A drop of water. Definitely. <laughs> he'll ink the paper. Yeah. At the end of the day, releasing just a mere hour because you get to a comfort zone. Here you are performing Monday to Monday. Because mm-hmm. when you find serious record labels, you'll even get gigs before you make it. They will start pushing you. Mm. You start going to airwaves. Here we find proud artists before they are bosses, forgetting who made them who they are. That's where Mobad's case is driving from. Yeah. He might have had issues with his boss. Mm-hmm. But if, if what Naira Mala is saying is right, 
he was more than an employee more than a signee so when, by the time <clears throat> by the time mobad had died mm-hmm. yeah mobad had already left uh, yeah. nara music had already left nara all right all right all right because at the point of his death he was going through a lot cuz even released the song trying to express what he's going through death death threats mm-hmm. amongst the reasons as to why he came out crying out of the song why would they arrest the nurse that administered the medication isn't, I, I believe isn't that her job it's her job but on a bad day anything can happen trust me Kelly just imagine me walking in here mm. i've left my place telling them i'm going for a podcast somewhere I left my home telling them I'm going to have a session with so and so. The reaching here I'm done with everything. I go back home. I got a bottle of water from the director. Yeah. Reaching home, they know you're healthy, they know you're fine. Definitely. I'm taken to hospital. They ask me, "Have you taken anything today?" I'm like, "Yeah, I took a, a bottle of water from somewhere." Yeah. And where is that? I will tell them. Mm-hmm. Before they even come, I'm already dead. So the first person they look at where was he the person that got, got you definitely so the yeah. nurse that's where the nurse comes in mm-hmm. but again suspicion start raising up where is naira mali because all along mobad has been crying out for his life yeah claiming naira mali is after him and the members so here comes the situation where by naira mali is but is it true that he was really after him or those are just allegations too allegations those are allegations not until the police confirms it because it's under investigations mm. yeah because naira mali had to fly back to nigeria yeah because he was outside oh by the time by the time mobad died naira mali, naira mali was, was abroad. abroad that's what he says mm. other sources say he was he, in, he, was he, was in, in the country. he left after issues started escalating yeah people were, actually i saw a video of a, a member of like masses mm. burning naira mali's house in nigeria by the time moba died mm. immediately as soon as they burnt down naira mali's they house, his house. yeah so we don't know whether he was still in the country mm. or he was abroad when the police summoned him to come back to nigeria he came back mm. and he went for investigations so we they had to go and <clears throat> get the cops of moba because the police are taking the issue lightly they had to go and get it from the grave sure yeah they took it to hospital for post mortem but we haven't yet got mm. any feedback yet all right so i believe it's an issue between when i want to leave a record label when i'm an artist mm-hmm. i can leave are you do, do, do you just live willingly cuz is, is is a record label more like a, a, a military a military kind of thing where you had to finish a certain point of time and then leave because you don't just live by your own will he definitely by the time by the time naira mali is still so if you've signed for a couple of years yeah. you had to first finish those years and leave the country definitely contract. no matter the situation because you've seen people in the army they go through a lot of hurdles making it but if they haven't yet approved you to move out you can't same thing to record labels they give you a contract mm mm-hmm. You want to move out of a contract because you started making some money. So they have You've made a name. Mm. But you might you might even have finished up your years. But there is a clause in the contract mm. that's not accepting you to leave. You see, that's why I tell you I have so to read with the all artist, those procedures you get it. critically. With the artist, he will look at this clause as something minor. Mm. The whole point will be I'm done with my years with you. Let me leave. But to the management or the record label, they are so keen with this because they invest in a lot of money, and they haven't even got a quarter of the money they've put in. Artists don't think of that. Mm. I'm not saying Naira Mali did the right thing or whoever did it. Yeah. But one thing I understand is artists are so, are so, are so. I don't know what term to use against them. These are people who come out like they are so desperate for the possessions. Exactly. Mm. When they are called out for a contract or for an opportunity, I'll give you an example of girls. You see, that's where the white man said if you ever want to have something for Africans, Definitely. I didn't in books. So, I think Naira Mali 
could not be the right person to blame for this because it's a blame game. As an artist rising up, you have many enemies. Sure. You have many people against you. Many people don't like you. Though you might look at the few that love you, but there are a lot of people you've been because it's a race at mm. the end of the day. You started with many, but you find out that it, many died, many along the way gave up, and you made it. What word, what word can you give out to all your people, all, all the people that are outside there, if they want to get signed into a record level, mm. what, what, what can they do? One word I can give out to any right now, artist out there. Right now, mm. we're looking at the situation where we only know a few yeah. record labels that are present on ground, yeah. that are stra- strategically located. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what advice would you give to the young, talented, upcoming artists if they want to get signed into a certain record label? What can they do? Do they have to look for a personality for them to get signed into a record label? That shouldn't be the case. Because that, that, that becomes way harder for them. You know, it's a global world right now. When you want to join Sony Music or Universal Studios, mm-hmm. you go online, you'll have to apply. Yeah. When you apply, there are email addresses, there are contacts, there are physical addresses. Among all the thousand record labels that you know, yeah. how many record labels do you know that you have to apply for online in Uganda? You only have to send a message. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> Even if you want to book, there's only the digits. You had to send the message. You only have... Actually, no, but I respect Swangs Avenue for that because I was somewhere yesterday and they told me Swangs Avenue brought up the issue of emailing. Mm-hmm audios to different media personalities all over globally. Mm. They brought the culture here. All right. And I'm glad I had to see emails of several artists mm. sending emails of their audios to media personalities. Swangs Avenue. But it's, I was told Swangs Avenue brought the culture here. So mm. I believe I won't give it 100%. But they've tried to blend around. Because I'm telling you, many upcoming artists are out there, but they just don't know who to reach out to or mm-hmm. where to reach out to for them to get signed into a record label. But you, <laughs> the, the good part about it, I'm sure every artist, every upcoming artist has a smartphone. A smartphone? Yeah, because <laughs> I'll be straight. They are, the, the address for any record label is the social media handles in Africa. Oh, sure, yeah, by the way, yeah. yeah. That's the address for any... Phys- because you look at Banky W, Banky W... We know Banky W. But for, then you know, these days social media has a lot of fraud stars. So you can't yeah. know which page is the real page for the exact record label. But they try to be verified. Most of them, because I've seen many. How? No, most of them. Mm, no, no, most of them. I'm talking the, the ones we know. The ones you know. Yeah. They, not the ones we know. <laughs> because when I look at record labels in the record label business in Uganda, you know, we have what we call friends of the industry. Mm-hmm. When I'm a friend of the industry, I wish well for an industry. I give a hand. Yeah. Then there's what we call music business or entertainment business. Mm. So most of us are friends to the industry. That's one thing that's confusing people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might be helping an artist to run his music business that doesn't make me his manager. Because at the end of the day, the artist is paying, uh, the, the artist is paying everything, the bills, mm. on herself or himself. Wait, when they're signing to the record level? Uh, no, I'm giving an example. Yeah. This is what we call record labels in Uganda. Mm-hmm. I come in and tell you, you know what? I want to manage you. What's your name? I'm Alan Webbs. Mm-hmm. I have a company called Waves music. I want to manage you. Yeah. I have a producer called One Blessing. I have a producer called Kings Love. And I have a producer called Brian Beats. Mm. All those are my friends. Let us go and do some projects. I have a video guy. I have such and such, such and such a company. Yeah. Let us go and do a video. I know radio guys. Mm-hmm. Once my name starts appearing in songs for artists crediting me, for the work I've done for them. Mm-hmm. Definitely in Uganda, you become a record label holder. In Uganda. You don't need to apply no anywhere. Outside. I'm speaking of Uganda. I don't know how it works in Nigeria. Yeah. That's how it works in Uganda. They start calling you manager mm. in Uganda. In Uganda is the only country where a manager only has to take music to the radio. 
to play. Where, where the artist is paying his audio, he's mm. paying for his video, he's paying for his due fees, dues, everything. And me only taking the music to the radio and TV makes me the manager. Sure. So at the end of the day, I'll be counted as one of the record label holders in Uganda. And I'll be fighting so hard to fight record labels that are sitting in boardrooms brainstorming on how to release their music, on what strategies to do. And you'll end up saying record labels failed in such and such a country. Mm. But indeed, the, we, we were just friends of the industry. So artists fail to know that. You have a friend of the industry. They become reluctant on finding people who can help them. I want you to help me, <clears throat> un- <clears throat> help me understand one thing. Yeah. By the time an artist gets signed into a record label, mm. is it the record label that uh, manages <clears throat> everything about his music? I'll, I'll give an example with the U.S. We grew up thinking when, when, when you are signed onto a record label in the U.S. Mm-hmm. and they have an artist, Alan, on, on like on the face of the record label. Yeah. When they get Kelly on board, Alan is put aside. We grew up thinking you are signed to at times you might be coming and you are going to be a threat to their artist. Mm. So they sign you and put you on board. They give you everything you would ever want mm-hmm. before you even make a hit. Mm. They just give you one song, take you for a tour, and you are forgotten. But that's not the case. Why is it done? A record label signs you mm. from zero. Let me take an example of Eddie Sheeran. Mm-hmm. Eddie Sheeran left UK, went to the US. Yeah. I, I, he went for some, was it, auditions. One of the judges liked him. Mm. He took him into his place. Mm-hmm. He slept there where he used to go and look out for jobs, do some music, play his guitar on the roads, do everything but sleeping in that judge's place. He's, a, he's an act actually. Mm. So at, at a certain point, he, he is asked to back up mm-hmm. a famous female artist in studio. They like him. Yeah. They take him on a tour to back an artist. Yeah. At the end of the day, the record label gets interested. All right. They hit studio, do a record. They sign him in. They sign him in. They change his life. Mm -hmm. I believe a record label is supposed to change someone's life. It might fail making hits. Sure. But at least they should change this person's life. Because by the time I entrust you with my vision, because every artist has a vision, they have dreams. By the time I get my life, my vision, dreams, everything, because it's you to buy me clothes, it's you to pay my my apartment, it's you to buy my car, it's you to give me fuel for my car, Mm -hmm. to know what I'm supposed to eat, buy my data, do everything for me. Yeah. So you are supposed to change my life. I'm supposed to hit studio. Deliver the music. And deliver the music. Yeah. Leave the marketing part for you. By the time I move out of my car, come to the studio, Yeah. I'm like a baby pampered. Just to give you what you want. All right. That's why you will find an artist getting 30% of a record. Because the 70 has to go back to the record label. Mm. Because they they pamper you. They are like parents to you. Facilitates everything. Definitely. So I I believe they are supposed to give in everything. All right. You heard the man. You heard the man. Hey, all your artists out there, you better stay rushing for that record label deal. Yeah. You heard what they do. You heard what they do. Yeah. If you're going to get signed into a record label, you're going to get facilitated with everything. You feel? You feel? All right, right about now, I'm going to close this show. Hey, man. I'm always glad to have you on the show. You know that, right? Yeah, at least I got bottles now. <laughs> Though, I need the brown ones. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's serious. <laughs> All right. The next time we should bring up, we should bring up the brown bottles. Yeah. Uh, the, br- the brown bottles or the long, the long bottles? I, know, I don't want the long ones. I just want the brown one because we might end up not delivering what we're supposed to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right about now, you're in the Kings and Queens Talk Show. We're summing this up once yeah. again. Hey, if you want to get signed into a record label, I'm going to first send out, send out, send you out to, to my man, my brother, my brother, Ellie. You just had him on the talk show. He knows a lot of record labels. Yeah, so I'm allowed to drop your links right there. So yeah. in case anyone wants to get into a record label, he'll come running to you. I also have one. 
Are you for real? Yeah, I also have one. Tell me about it. Yeah, I also have one. You sure? Yeah. And anyway, I have artists on it. I'm going to come for that sign in any time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, drop your links. <laughs> uh, you can go to Alan Webs on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Maybe next time I'll drop my digits. Yes, if sir. I'm allowed to. Hey, you, hey. Man, you always allowed to drop I'm the tickets here. Because, hey, there are lots of ladies who are looking at you right <laughs> no, now and they're saying, only, only business, can that make business, it, man, business, business. Business. <laughs> Yeah. So, my digits are plus 256-776-7171-04. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, ladies, you had the man. Yeah. He just dropped his tens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to me. I'm the house, Kev Kelly. Yeah, I'm going to have you on this show the next time. If you drop your comment right there, we can give you a call. You can come to the talk show. Just share your ideas. Share a few ideas with us, yeah? And don't forget to click that like button. And also click that subscribe button. You know what it is. It's your boy, Kev Kelly, once again. Hey, it's the Kings, Queens, Talk Show. You know what it is. I'm going to say, peace out of, oh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh-huh. <laughs>